All right, so welcome back to another video. So in this video, I'm going to show you all how to uh, connect to a MongoDB database. So what we're going to do first is, uh, well, first, uh, a couple of things that you'll need to obviously have before we get started. You need to go ahead and download MongoDB. So MongoDB is a NoSQL database. So uh, unlike MySQL or just SQL in general, it actually is composed of collections and each collection can have a, a number of documents, okay? And the documents are structured in a JSON-like format, okay? I think MongoDB is a pretty easy database to use for absolute beginners. So make sure you go over to mongodb.com, go over to products, click on community edition, and then go ahead and make sure you download the community server. Make sure you select the current version. Uh, select the platform that you want to install it on. So if you're running Windows, you install for Windows. If you're running Mac OS, you install for Mac OS. And that's pretty much it. So go ahead and download the installation, run the installation. It should set up the server locally for you. And that's pretty much it. Uh, so once you're done installing MongoDB, we can go ahead and actually start connecting to database. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and show you how to install it because there's plenty of tutorials out there that teach you how to do it. So just go ahead and watch one on YouTube or Google a guide. It's really easy to set up. If you have any additional questions or if you have any issues, I have a Discord server. Feel free to join it and post a question on the server and uh, regarding the MongoDB installation and someone or myself will be able to get back to you. But assuming that you already have MongoDB installed, we can actually go ahead and start making a connection to a database. So we're gonna go ahead and install a package called Mongoose. Now, Mongoose is a JavaScript library that allows you to make a connection to the database as well as interact with the database. Okay, it's also a very popular tool. It's called a ORM, which stands for Object Relational Mapper. And the main responsibility of an Object Relational Mapper is to pretty much map objects into a, or at least in the, in the context of databases, it's supposed to map JavaScript objects, or in general, it's supposed to map objects into uh, the actual database table or the database uh, collection or document. So let's say, for example, if we're using MongoDB, we're going to create something called a schema. And the schema is really just a JavaScript object or a class, right? And that class is going to end up mapping to the database collection or MongoDB database collection. Okay. And it's going to pretty much save each record in the, in the collection, the way that we want it to be saved. So the nice thing about ORMs is that they abstract all of the raw database queries that you'll have to write manually yourself if you didn't use an ORM. So you don't have to worry about learning the actual uh, structured query language for whatever database you're trying to use. You can continue writing code in whatever language you're using and interact with the database. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. But like I said, uh, don't worry so much about that right now. When we actually start using Mongoose, it will make lots of sense. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to go ahead and install Mongoose. Okay, once we're done installing Mongoose, let's go ahead and just run the application again. And we're going to go ahead and import Mongoose. So I'll do that right up top over here. All right, once we have imported Mongoose, we can go ahead and try to establish a connection. Now, again, like I said, I'm assuming that you already have MongoDB installed. So we're going to go ahead and reference Mongoose and we're going to call connect. And we're going to pass in the URI. So this is just going to be MongoDB colon forward slash forward slash. And then if you have authentication, you can actually specify the username and password. So like this username colon password, and then at, and then you have to specify the host name. In our case, since we're using MongoDB locally, we will just pass in localhost. Okay. And then we also have to specify the port, so which is just the default port 27017. Okay, and then we're going to have to add the name of the database that we want to connect to. I'm just going to call this ExpressJS Tutorial. Now, since we're not going to have any authentication, I'm going to remove this username password section. And we're just going to connect to the database like this. Now, in order to make sure that our database is connecting successfully, what we can do is we can go ahead and handle this .connect method, which returns a promise. So we can go ahead and call .den. 
And all I'm going to do is just console log connected to DB. And if there's any error, it will throw an error. So we'll catch it and we'll log the error like this. Okay, so if we look in the console now, it should say connected to DB. So the connection was successful. Now to test this out, to make sure that to, to make it so that it actually is connecting successfully, um, let's say for example, if we were to just get rid of the invalid, if we were to get rid of the correct port and change it to an invalid port, we can see that it's actually going to just throw an error in a, in a couple in a bit, in a couple seconds, it should throw an error. Uh, you can see that it's not saying connected to DB though, so something is definitely happening, but it's not able to connect to the database successfully. I think it just takes some time for it to actually uh, throw the error. I'm not sure why. It hasn't yet though. Let me try restarting. Maybe we can pass in a callback function. Okay. Well, either way, we know for a fact that when we passed in the invalid port, we can see that it's not staying connected to DB. I think it just takes some time for it to actually uh, throw the error. Because I think underneath the hood, it probably tries to retry the connection over and over again. But don't worry so much about that. Okay, so we're connected to the database successfully. Now, what I'm also going to recommend you do is install a tool called uh, Compass. So just go to Products, Underneath Tools, Download Compass. And MongoDB Compass allows you to connect it to your database. And it gives you a graphical user interface to actually view your database you can view the collections, all the documents. You can look at the data literally as it is. Okay. So I actually already have it installed already. So let me open up that program right now. Okay. It's a very lightweight application that you can use. It's really helpful for debugging your application. So I would highly recommend uh, you all look into it. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up over here. And I'm going to go ahead and... Try to see if I can make a connection. Uh, okay, so I can go, let me zoom in. So localhost port 27017, no authentication, connect. Okay, cool, so we have a bunch of, so here I already have some uh, pre-existing databases already from previous projects, but this is what it looks like. So if you want to, you can click on the database and you can go ahead and view the documents, okay? Now, let's go ahead and just uh, do this, okay? We're going to go into our code right now, and I'm going to go ahead and create a folder called database. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually move this mongoose. Uh, I'm going to move this mongoose.connect call into this database file. Okay. So that way we don't put everything in the main file. So let's do this. And then all we'll do is we'll literally just import that file right over here. So we'll do require database like this okay so that'll literally just connect to the database but from a different file so we can kind of like keep our code a lot more clean okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a folder called schemas and what we're going to do is we're going to create a schema so a schema pretty much allows us to define what our data is going to look like okay in our case our mongodb database is going to consist of collections and each collection is going to represent uh, a structured way of how our documents are going to look like in that collection. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a record for a user. Uh, and in order to do that, we have to create a schema. So I'm going to go ahead and create a user schema right now. And it's really easy to create a schema. The first thing that we got to do is import mongoose. And then what we can do is we can just simply say const uh, user schema equals mongoose schema and actually we have to call uh, we have to actually use the new keyword because we have to create an instance of schema so const user schema is equal to new mongoose.schema and this will create a new instance of our schema now inside the object inside the constructor of schema we can go ahead and define all of our properties and its data type so for example, our user is going to have several properties. Well, for now, we're just going to go ahead and set a username. Okay. And we can go ahead and specify the type to be a mongoose.schema types.string. And we can set uh, required to true. 
So this means that this property must be uh, must be present. Okay, if it's not present when we try to create a new user, it's going to throw an error. Okay, we'll go ahead and create a password field. And then we're going to go ahead and specify this type to be a string and required will be set to true. We'll also go ahead and do another property for email. And let me just copy and paste this. And then we can also set a property for created at to indicate when the user was created. And for the data type, we can actually specify this data type to be a date type. Well, we're going to use the mongoose schema types instead of the actual JavaScript type itself. Okay. And we'll set this to be true. You can also set default values as well. So you can just set this to be default equals new date. So we don't have to actually specify the created app property when we're creating the user. It'll just do it automatically by default because we set the property here. Okay, if there's, a, if there's any other properties that you would want to add to the schema, you can go ahead and define it inside here. Okay, but now all of these properties would pretty much exist on our user's document. Okay, so let's go ahead and do one last step. What we need to do is we need to go ahead and compile our schema into an actual model and we can do that by referencing mongoose and calling the model function and we can go ahead and pass in the name for this model and we'll just call it users and we have to pass in the schema okay and we're also just going to export this as well so what we can do later is we can then import this wherever we want and we can start interacting with our users collection okay so right now, if we look in our database, if I try to refresh, nothing's going to happen. The reason why you're not seeing the database right over here, like you're not seeing the Express.js tutorial database, is because we don't have anything in the database. Okay, By default, the default behavior with MongoDB is if the collection, or not the collection, if the database is empty, it's just not going to show up at all. So we actually need to create some data. Okay, So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to our routes, uh, and we're going to go ahead and create another endpoint. And I'll go ahead and just uh, underneath inside the auth.js router, we'll just create another route for signing up. So uh, when the user visits the route, it would be something like slash auth slash register. Because I think register registration, I mean, we can kind of categorize registration with auth. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and expect the user to take in or to not take in, but we're going to expect the user to pass in a username, email, and password. So with the username, uh, password, email, we're going to destructure that from request.body. Okay. And what we'll do is we'll just assume that all of these properties are always going to be present because in a future episode, we're going to go ahead and uh, do, we're going to create a separate episode later on uh on validation which means validating to make sure that the username password and email are present for now we're just going to keep it simple and just assume that these properties will always be present okay just because i want to focus on the actual main point of the video which is the database connection and you know creating records in the database okay so every single time we call this endpoint we're going to create a new user so what we're going to do is first let's import the user the user model okay, not the user schema the user model which is this mongoose.model that's being exported okay so we're going to go up top here and we'll do const user equals require and we're going to go outside one directory go into database go into schemas and import the users user model i should really call them models but it's fine okay so now we have the user model and we're going to have to write some logic. So we only want to create a new user if uh, that user has not been found. Now, for our search, it's going to be a little bit tricky because we need to search. Uh, we need to check the database to see if the user exists, if, if, the, if there's already a user that exists with, the, with that username and or the email as well. If one of these returns true, like if you can find the user uh, based off of the username or the email, then that means that they cannot use that specific field. They have to change that field. Okay. So to find to to handle this, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a variable called user DB. And I actually also added the async keyword in front of the callback function because we're going to be using async await. So we're going to go ahead and call user dot find 
uh, one. And we're going to use the or operator to search based on our conditions. So it's going to be username or email. So what this will do, or what it should do, is it should return a document in the database. Uh, if we can find the document based on the username or the email. Okay. So let's say, for example, there's a document, there's a user record in the database with the username Anson and the email address is anson at gmail.com. Okay. And if we're trying to sign up, uh, and let's say, for example, the, the, we use the same username, but we use a different email, it should still return that record from the database. Okay. So if the user DB is truthy, which means that the user was found, we'll go ahead and set the status code to 400, which indicates that it's a bad request. And we'll just say user already exists. Okay. If the user is not found in a database, then we'll just simply create it. So we'll go ahead and do const new user equals user dot create. Whoops. Okay. And we'll pass in the username, password, email, like this. And we can also just await that call. We're not done yet though, because what we need to do is we need to uh, save the user. So we need to call user dot, user dot, not user, new user, sorry, dot save. Why is it not, hold on. Why does this not give me back the intelligence that I need? That's kind of cringe. Not sure why it doesn't give me back. Anyways, that should pretty much do the trick. And it shows you how to do this in the documentation as well. So you can see that we call uh, dot save. Okay. So let's go ahead and try this out in Postman now. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy this URL. And we'll do API slash v1 slash auth. So let's register and we'll go ahead and pass in a JSON body. So username, Anson, password, one, two, three, and an email, Anson at gmail.com. So we should get no errors. Seems like nothing, it seems like no error happened, which is good. Okay. Uh, so it seems like it was able to create the record in a database. If I refresh, you're going to see that we were actually able to create the record successfully, which is good. Now, I'm not sure if I actually need the dot save. Let me actually try this again. Let me see. Okay. Yeah. So it seems like we actually don't even need to call dot save. If we just call create like this, it should actually just work the way it does. I thought we need to call save for some reason, but anyways, so let's go ahead and send a response back. We'll set the status to 201. Well, actually, I'll just do send 201. Okay. Okay. So now we have two records in our database. We have a username and then we have password and email. Now let's try this. Let's test out our logic. Okay. So let's go ahead and try to create a new user with the same username and email. You're going to see it says user already exists. Now, what if I, uh, what if I change it to, uh, let's say for example, I change it to the username Anson and then the email is Anson1, it's going to still say user exists. What if I try Anson2 for the username, but I use the same email, it should still say user already exists. So, that, so we know our condition is working. If I change it to Anson2 for the username and Anson2 at gmail.com for the email, it creates it. And there we go. So that's pretty much it when it comes to connecting to the database and creating records uh, using a schema. Okay. It's going to be pretty much similar when it comes to creating records. You search for a record. If it doesn't exist, you create a new one. If it does exist, you can return it. It also is based off of your business logic too and what you're trying to do. Okay. So hopefully this makes sense and I will see you all in my next episode. Peace out.